ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are the two main forms of inflammatory bowel disease. In this video, we'll cover them both and go through the differences between them, including the histology. First of all, ulcerative colitis is thought to be twice as common as Crohn's disease, with incidence rates of 10 to 20 per 100,000 per year, compared to 5 to 10 per 100,000 per year in Crohn's disease. Both can happen at any age, although most commonly they are both diagnosed in the age range of 15 to 30 years, and on average Crohn's disease is found a few years before ulcerative colitis. Some studies show that ulcerative colitis is found more commonly in men, while Crohn's disease is more common in females. Both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are typically seen more commonly in developed and northern countries. Another difference between the two is that ulcerative colitis is confined to the colon and to the rectum, while Crohn's disease may affect anywhere along the GI tract from the mouth to the anus. This means that the signs and symptoms may be different, but in general, the features of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are the presence of chronic or episodic diarrhea, which may feature rectal bleeding due to ulceration of the lining of the bowel, abdominal pain or cramping, urgency to pass a bowel movement, and a sensation of incomplete emptying of the rectum, termed tenesmus. Other general symptoms can include weight loss, fever, night sweats, and fatigue. More specifically for ulcerative colitis, heavy bloody diarrhea is more likely than in Crohn's disease, as is the risk of toxic megacolon, a condition in which the colon becomes swollen and enlarged, in this case due to inflammation and damage to the myenteric plexus of the bowel, preventing it from being able to pass on bowel contents. This leads to a buildup of gas and feces and is a risk for perforation and sepsis. As we said, Crohn's disease can affect anywhere along the GI tract, but it is most commonly found to affect the terminal ileum and proximal colon. There are several subtypes, including an inflammatory variant that can feature ulcers, erosions and abscess formation, a stricturing type that can lead to obstructions, and a more penetrating variant leading to fistulas. Crohn's disease can also have significant effects on absorption of nutrients depending on where it is affecting. Because the terminal ileum and proximal colon are the commonest location, there is often malabsorption of bile salts and vitamin B12. Other deficiencies can include iron, calcium and vitamin D. Extra gastrointestinal manifestations are frequent. The most common is arthritis, with 30% of patients being affected. Mostly this is a peripheral arthritis, but in some cases can be ankylosing spondylitis. Alongside joints, the bones themselves are also affected, with increased rates of osteoporosis and osteopenia. The skin is involved in 20% of cases, including erythema nodosum, which is where painful red nodules appear on the shins, pyoderma gangrenosum, as well as skin tags, fistulas and stomatitis are all possibilities. Eyes are affected in 10% of cases, including uveitis and episcleritis, and in 5% of cases, the liver is involved, which can include fatty liver disease, hepatitis or gallstones, but also remember that there is a link between ulcerative colitis and primary sclerosing cholangitis. Anemia is also included here, which can come as a result of iron deficiency due to poor absorption or chronic bleeding, as well as vitamin B12 and folate deficiencies. The anemia can also be generated due to anemia of chronic disease and some medication use. So how do ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease actually happen? It is thought that it is an interplay between genetic susceptibility combined with environmental factors 
and impact on the gut microbiome alongside inappropriate immune activation. Risk factors include smoking, which is protective in ulcerative colitis, certain medications including antibiotic exposure, the oral contraceptive pill, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Procedures such as tonsillectomy and appendicectomy seem to increase the risk of Crohn's disease, and a diet rich in saturated fats and living in more urbanised regions are also risk factors. There is also implication of autoantibodies, with P. anchor in ulcerative colitis and anti-Saccharomyces cerevisiae antibodies in Crohn's disease. In terms of a diagnosis, faecal calprotectin is a marker of inflammation within the GI tract and is one of the first investigations done. However, it is not specific for inflammatory bowel disease and diagnosis is mostly confirmed by a colonoscopy and biopsy. The appearance and histology differ between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. In ulcerative colitis, on colonoscopy, the lesions are seen as continuous. The inflammation is only in the mucosal layers and the colonoscopy findings range from mild edema to spontaneous bleeding ulcers. Crohn's disease, on the other hand, as we said, can affect any part of the GI tract and has discontinuous lesions or ulcerations, usually 4 or 5 centimetres in size. The finding is described as a cobblestone pattern, and in contrast to ulcerative colitis, the inflammation in Crohn's disease is transmural. Looking specifically at the histology, the goblet cells are fewer in ulcerative colitis, while they are often normal in Crohn's disease, as well as seeing fewer crypt abscesses in Crohn's disease. The architecture of the glands is better preserved in Crohn's disease than ulcerative colitis, and as we already said, the inflammation is mostly limited to the mucosa in ulcerative colitis and is transmural in Crohn's disease. The associated inflammatory infiltrate is continuous in ulcerative colitis and is patchy in Crohn's disease. Also, as Crohn's disease is a granulomatous disease and ulcerative colitis is not, the presence of granulomas on histology is another difference. Imaging like ultrasound, CT and MRI can be used in some cases, particularly in Crohn's disease that is affecting other parts of the GI tract. Treatment generally involves the use of corticosteroids, although not in stricturing Crohn's disease as this may make it worse. Amino salicylates like misalazine have been shown to be effective in ulcerative colitis and thiopurines like mecaptopurin or azathioprine are also used. Immunomodulators, including cyclosporine and methotrexate, can be used in some cases and more recently, biological agents such as the anti-TNF-alpha agent infliximab or Yanis kinase inhibitor tofactinib have also been introduced. Antibiotics are also considered if the patient is demonstrating a septic picture, and in cases of Crohn's disease involving the upper GI tract, then proton pump inhibitors can also be used. Surgery is done in refractory or severe cases, which often involves bowel resection and anastomosis, and of course a total proctocolectomy is curative in ulcerative colitis.